Hello everybody, my name is Edge Guy and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. So, we shall start today with a fucking head in a bucket of war table. Because, wow, it's been a little while since I last recorded uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. A bunch of it slipped my mind, but I did just watch the episodes um, for the uh, for the war table the other, uh, just, just like yesterday and today. So I'm pretty, pretty well refreshed on this stuff, but it's going to take me a little bit and I got to get the results in for everybody. So expect this first episode to be war table and I'll try not to make it longer than that. Uh, let's see. Who's reporting in? Uh, Commander Cullen, bandits had taken residence inside the mine after the Templars left, but they were easily easy enough to drive out. We recovered a good deal of raw ore already mined and are making arrangements locally to find miners willing to go back to work. A little bit of obsidian, that's nice. Shadows over Denrim. Uh, this was the one for Alistair, I think. Inquisitor. Well, that was bracing. Uh, this is Alistair, yeah. Uh, a pitched battle with evil mages disguised as kitchen servants, fireballs flying and swords flashing. It brings back old times. I won't be eating anything coming out of those kitchens for a while, let me tell you. I wonder if they were going to poison me. Nasty little cultist. Anyway, I'm grateful for the Inquisition's help. We wouldn't have found them without you. Uh, Freldon Medallion service and some nice influence boosts, which is nice. And then strike a bargain with the Merchant Princes. A bundle of documents at least 50 pages thick explains the trade agreement the Inquisition has entered into the merchant uh, with the Merchant Princes of Antiva. Josephine has attached a note. Inquisitor, I am more than satisfied with the agreement. I mean, it was obvious it was going to be like, she's the best one to send on this. We reached with the Merchant Princes. Here is a duplicate if you wish to review it. No. I would put aside those three days and two dozen candles. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, Golden Influence. Excellent. Okay, so... We got a search for the hack writer, and uh, looks like some new stuff over here. So let's see. I want to send a couple people on like a longer one, uh, just to get all that. I mean, we got some places to explore, but uh, I'll talk about what I want to do uh, in the first. Wow. In uh, once I've done this bit, stop war between Navarre and Tevinter, huh? Uh, both Tevinter and Navarre were fighting against Venatori entrenched along the border. The battle showed no signs of abating until the Inquisition sent soldiers who pulled victory out of a seemingly insurmountable defeat. Both sides have attempted to claim this portion of land in the past, and both are attempting to do so again. Only the presence of our soldiers prevents them from beginning a war. We cannot allow this to happen. For the moment, each side is grateful enough to listen to our advice, and we must convince them to send their armies home. They'll press on both sides, calling upon all favours to do this. Uh, I fear the situation between Navarre and Ventral will deteriorate. We must be persuasive, decisive, and swift. That makes sense. Just go for it. Let us begin. I want to be, I mean, I'm glad I took the time to review all the stuff in the last episode, but I do want to be uh, a little more decisive. So what's this investigation? Aha. Race nor background information on the Venatori agent and, and Hunter Fell. The Bells are effectively nobility in the city. Any information about them is protected. All right, well, I'm going to uh, look up the previous quest, quest text, as I mentioned that I would do. Uh, so that I am fully up to date with everything that I did. Uh, I think I even remember who I investigated. So... Uh, back with you in just a mo. Righto. So, yeah, we went after the apostate uh, as a potential venatory agent. And... Yeah, I don't know why I thought that might be an agent for the venatory, honestly, because the, the venatory are Tevinter. Tevinter doesn't really treat apostates in the same way. I think that was maybe a... A false end. Um, racer background information the venatory agent Hunter Fell. The bells are effectively nobility in the city. Any information about them is protected. The Talva Shaw uh, is not a mage. Well, that's fine. Um, because there is... Da -da 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 -da. Well, she was or is one of Tithus's lovers. She is now in a relationship with a smuggler. And looking back on the original quest decks, um, there is uh, two humans, uh, an elf who is the apostate, a dwarf, and even a Talva Shaw. Talva Shaw is, is not a mage. Um, more Talatasi. Isn't that... Who is that? That's the, uh... I forget what culture they're from, but they're like dead keepers or something. Dragon hunter to bard, smuggler, or even apostate. Okay, so the, the Talvashelf is not an apostate, which we sort of knew. Our Norwegian woman in Hunterfell might have a fondness for items from home. Perhaps I can find out what she wears. So yes, the Norwegian human uh, must might have a fondness for uh, items from home. Or, let's try to find out more about the mortality. I'm going to go with Liliana on this one. Inquisitor. Actually. And what about the Serpent of Navarra thing? Yes. Potential problem in the nation of Navarra. To venture major at the name of Aurelius. Has recently been noted in the company of King Marcus. Indeed, I remember this. Uh, there's evidence to indicate that he's a member of the Venatori. Having the Navarran king under their sway. 
Send an agent to eliminate the advisor as well as the supporters. Or convince him to see the light. Hmm. Either Cullen or Josephine, I think. I mean, we got Liliana's. Liliana's here just straight up kill him, but... Evidence indicate that he's a member of the Venatori. This could stir up some conflict with Navara. It's also pretty tempting. Just get information on him. I'll think about that one. I know we're concentrating on one one area at the moment, but you know, whatevs. Uh, so nothing left in or lay. What about Freldon? Maybe we send Cullen to do something in Freldon. Search for the hat crater. Yes, I remember this. Uh, friend of the Kirkwall Guard. She's a coterie boss. Yep. Poor sod carrying the manuscripts is where it gets weird. The courier is a magistrate. Hmm. No, this doesn't seem. This doesn't scream Colin to me either. What's. What's this? Here we go. We face Darkspawn Magister. Um. I'd find him until this is the light. We have Blackwell's treaties and we have cause. Again, I feel like I'm leaning more towards. In okay, I, I respect the fact that we have. Um. We need more forces. Uh. Grey Warden influence may loosen even the tightest lips. That's still pretty good. Okay, Cullen's a good a good one for that. I don't really care about the resources. Tear to Bright Axe. You know. Yeah. Grabbing an axe? Let's get Cullen all over that. Why the hell not? The others are away doing their thing. Nine minutes for that one. Yeah, so maybe we'll we'll come back at the beginning of the next episodes to uh, or the end of this episode to send. Uh, I think it's Liliana on the next thing. But everybody else is kind of away for a decent chunk of time. Okie dokie. Well, last episode, do you remember? I said that we shouldn't talk to Solus first. <laughs> but whoops, I just knocked my microphone. Apologies for that. Um. We shouldn't talk to Solus first because it does a thing which potentially means that we can't get anybody at- whoa. Huh? Oh, right, okay, cool. Oh, well, that's where that stop war thing came from, it's the results. Uh, yeah, because otherwise we couldn't have the initial conversations with anybody else. What uh, I didn't say was, let's not talk to Solus ever again. So we're going to do that a first time, because I completely forgot to do it at the end of the last session. Uh, how about Varric? Hey. Yeah, I wondered about this, uh, talking to you after that. She's calmed down. Are you? That got a little heated. You all right? Whoa. Well, <laughs> that depends. How angry is Cassandra? I wasn't trying to keep secrets. I told the Inquisition everything that seemed important at the time. I know, I know. Um... You know about Corypheus? There's no way he thought this was connected. There's no way. They killed him after all. Um... I think you should talk to her. I bet Cassandra regrets how things went back there. You should talk to her. I appreciate that you're trying to keep the peace, but things between me and the Seeker are as good as they'll get. I keep hoping none of this is real. Maybe it's all some bullshit from the Fade and it'll just disappear. Mm. I know I need to do better. I'm sorry. That's okay, Varric. Well, we shouldn't talk to you again until after all this is kind of cleared away. It's a little... It's a little weird. Alright, let's go speak to Solus. There he is. What can I do for you? Hello. I thought you were meant to trigger something. I need to know more about Corypheus. We spoke of this on our travels to Skyhold. What more can I tell you? I don't know. Sandra and Varric seem more familiar with their adversary. It's true. Um, but your opinion has always been different than theirs. Um, but I will ask them to. Oh, I'll take advice from just about anyone right now. <laughs> I'm flattered. I claim no secret wisdom. <laughs> but I will guess as best I can. Okay. Um, this orb. I'd like to know more about the orb he carries. As I said, that must be the means by which he created the breach. I suspect the blast to destroy the conclave was more accident than anything. Mm -hmm. The result of unlocking power that had sought release for ages. 
What I cannot understand is how he managed to survive such an explosion. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the orb is elven. You said that you believed the orb is elven. I never would have believed a Devinter mage could unlock such a powerful relic. Hmm. It clearly enhances his abilities, giving him access to power he should never have known. Like the power to control the Archdemon. Indirectly, one assumes. Nothing in any law connects my people to the old god dragons who became Archdemons. That's true. That is true, and that is weird. Maybe there's a bridge in him somewhere, but I couldn't imagine what it would be. What do you think Corypheus will do next? You shamed him when you destroyed Haven. Hmm. Spoiled his glorious victory. It would be worse to acknowledge that you had done so. He must continue on his course or show weakness. He will return to his plans to throw Ole into chaos and then conquer it for Devinta. So he won't specifically target me because I... Because <sighs> I showed him up, basically. He needs to pretend like he doesn't care. Man, a lot of politics in this game. A lot of politics. You're sure that's what he'll do? As certain as is possible. Assuming I can plausibly predict a man who seeks to rise to godhood. Mm -hmm. Can you? The key is understanding this. No real god need prove himself. Anyone who tries is mad or lying. His deception will undo him. As it has done countless fools before. He doesn't claim to be a god. He claims to want to be a god, is the thing. What can you tell me about the source of Corypheus's power? According to the law, the ancient magistars of Devinter received guidance from the old gods. Corypheus commands a false archdemon, a corrupted old god. This suggests he no longer sees himself as their minion. Mm. Some of his unique power comes from the corruption of the Blight. The rest may come from the orb he carries. It's true that neither the Architects nor Corypheus um, appear to be under the control of the Archdemon upon awakening it. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Maybe um, the Architects could have controlled the Archdemon had he tried. I don't really know. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Alright, the way that everybody... Maybe it's just a glitch. The way that everybody was talking about it was that it should trigger something when I speak to you, but obviously not. Obviously that's not happening. Um, oh man, I meant to investigate that mod fix thing. That bug fixer. Uh, and I'm kind of tired of hanging around in ruins, but people did tell me that I should speak to people again before I start going about my business. So let's do that. Uh, oh. Vivienne's moved on. Okay. Oh no, there they are. There they are. Hello. Dragon Age Inquisition. Inquisitor. What can I do for you, darling? Hello. <laughs> um None of this seems None of this seems new. Demon armies and wardens, and Varric has exactly who we need. The big talker just knows everything. <laughs> Why did you really join me? That's an interesting one. So, you like to have fun. The Inquisition seems an odd fit. <laughs> Why are you really here? What do you mean? To help people. It just seems like there's more to it. It's starting to sound like you're looking for something more. It is. Mostly. Okay, fine. There's <laughs> talk and... I want to see. See what? I don't know. I just... I've got all this Chantry stuff in my head, and it makes sense, right? But it's... fuzzy. I want to see if it's all really real. I just don't know if I want to really know. <laughs> so I'm selfish. It's all for me. Count yourself lucky, I guess. No, I, I disagree. There's nothing... Ro People worry about, um... having ulterior motives when they do something good. Like, uh, if it's something as simple as uh, what's called virtue signaling, where it's like, you say something nice, and you do it primarily to look good, it's still saying something nice, and it is still... It doesn't necessarily say great things about you, but it doesn't invalidate the action. So you coming along to help, you're still helping, whether or not your motivations are that or not. Um, in certain cases it'd be a concern, but you know. Are things playing out the way you expected? Cassandra laid it out, right? You're the big hat now. <laughs> Gonna make everything the way it should be. Crane's nice, I suppose. Corypheus bit, though. Shite. <laughs> Corypheus. 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 
Sax Splash. I know his name. Sax doesn't deserve the respect of me saying it. Sax Splash. <laughs> I'll be back if I need you. Go on. Is that as gross as it sounds, or is it a random combination of nouns? Hello. At your service. Hello. Varric's friend Hawk said there were suspicions of corruption in Grey Warden ranks. Do you know anything about that? Corruption? What sort of corruption? Corypheus. He's been known to influence the minds of Wardens. That could very well explain why so many have disappeared. Mm hmm I mean, how's yours? Are you feeling all right? No voices or anything? If I start hearing things, I promise you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you know much about him? How much do you know about Corypheus? Not much. I always thought the stories of Magisters corrupting the Golden City were just that. Stories. Hmm. I didn't expect them to be true, and I certainly didn't expect to find one of them still alive. That's true. I mean, you're not alone there. Hmm. Don't the Grey Wardens know everything about Darkspawn? You don't have to know how a Darkspawn came to be in order to kill it with soldiers, not historians. And the world would be better off if people focused on defeating evil rather than explaining how it came to be. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think that understanding breeds prevention, you know? It's all very well batting down evil when it crops up, but... Trying to solve a problem indefinitely? That requires knowledge. Um, however, wardens are meant to know when there's a blight. You hear the archdemon. A oh, Liliana, cool. Corypheus stopped being human a long time ago. Darkspawn don't have human lifespans, do they? No, I suppose they don't. They're unnatural and sustained by evil. <laughs> it's been thousands of years. You'd think the Wardens would have managed to kill the first Darkspawn by now. Eh, they kind of went to ground. Do you know if there are more Darkspawn like Corypheus? I don't know. I'm not sure any Warden knows. I mean, they, the Grey Wardens found Corypheus, the, one of the first Darkspawn, and couldn't even control him. Let's discuss something else. Bye. Nothing right now. Perhaps in a bit. Hmm. So maybe it's just simple bits of conversation. I was recommended to uh, speak to everybody at least twice before I leave. But I don't know, maybe this is something that they've patched since you guys played or something like that? I really did get the impression, just nobody said overtly but that Solus's conversation was meant to trigger something. But it doesn't, and maybe the reason that it doesn't is because they realized this glitch of this this speaky glitch, um, and kind of I don't know softened him until something happens. But I really do get the impression that the place is going to uh, change between you know now and when I return to it. Let's uh, actually we need to head back to the war table. Uh, we'll wrap up this episode, which might be a little bit shorter by uh, sending Liliana to do something a little bit longer term. Maybe uh, getting the information from the warden conscripts because mm, I do want more soldiers. By I'm not too fond of the idea of giving up information in order to get it. Hey, Josephine, in your ruffled shirt, you. Um, yeah. Summon the War Council. Soon, Josephine will be back as well. Although apparently she's still sitting at her desk, but she's a politician, she can do most things from her desk. Who's drinking on the job? Come on, Cullen, is it you? You hiding, <laughs> you hiding beer in those pauldrons of yours. That are certainly big enough, you big square shouldered feck. Alright. Alleged to Liliana with information on the Orlesian. She and the elf are the two members of the Bells who practice magic. She has on occasion purchased a uh, exotic dragon related uh, ingredients from the Talva Shoth. Okay. It was unclear whether the Talva Shoth gets them through hunting or smuggling. Right, so who was it that was in a relationship with the smuggler? Identify Venatory Agent. Okay, there it is. Maybe I'll just send Liliana on this. Ah, crap, okay, it's decision time. Mortal Tassi, eliminate the Bard. Interesting. It's a long one as well. Well, we'll leave that off for now. And let's just head out, head down. Find the Warden. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Um...
Conscript for the Inquisition. Well, that sells it to face starts by manager. Suspiciously can arch steam. What we need is information. What we need is information. See what we have. Good luck, Liliana. There we go. See, a marginally, uh... Ah, let's actually stretch it. We might as well stretch it a little bit. We'll, we'll carry on and have a chat with a couple more people. Maybe, depending on the length of the conversations, we can even get this wrapped up. I honestly... Uh, do you know what? I was sort of expecting from the way that people were talking that I'd actually spend today's session in Skyhold as well. But now with the prospect... Whoa. <laughs> now with the prospect of potent... Thank God stairs came in during that little... Wow. That was fucking close, that one. I don't fancy falling through the world. Thank you very much. That does not sound like a pleasant Sunday afternoon. Let's go down here and we'll speak to Cullen. Who is hopefully still down here. Hello, Cullen. Yes? Yes. What? Anything I should know? Is there anything I should know? Repairs to Skyhold's fortifications are progressing. Our scouts report no immediate threats in the surrounding area. We are fortunate Solus knew of this place. That's very true. That's all for now. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Ah, cool. I forgot you were here. Hello. He hates it all because of the darkness behind the door. Some doors should stay shut. What? I'd like to talk about what happened to you before we met. Before you, Reese was my friend. He showed me I was wrong to kill the mages. I thought I was helping them. Then he and Evangeline went to Adamant, and I went with them. I was worried Evangeline would hurt Reese. We found out dangerous things. It scared Seeker Lambert, and he scared the mages. It started the rebellion. Seeker Lambert told me what I was. Reese couldn't look at me. I ran until I found more Templars. That's all. Really? Well, and what, you were keeping an eye on them? You were at the Rebellion? What was the Spire like when the Mage Rebellion started? Dead and dying, begging and bloody. Some wanted freedom, some peace, some war. Some wanted it all to stop. Evangeline was a Templar, but she helped Reese help the others. She set them free. Adrian was a mage, but she killed mages to force the fight. She wanted blood. Reese just wanted to help, to stop people hurting. Maybe that's why he saw me. Maybe. Huh. You and stopping people hurting. It's becoming more and more themed to your being. It's angel of death. And as for all this stuff, I don't know, it's, it's kind of hard to penetrate what you're saying exactly, because you're a lot of names flying around, which I don't know. I understand your your backstory was told in, a, in the Asunder novel, but I haven't read it, and I didn't wiki it or anything like that, because Marcus wouldn't know it. <sighs> you killed mages? What did you mean when you said you killed mages? Some of the mages of the Spire wanted to die. Too sad, too scared, right? too much. I didn't know what I was. A ghost, I thought. Fading in the fade. When I came to them, they could see me. I used the knife to set them free. When Reese found out, he made me stop. Made me understand. There were other ways to help. I didn't know. Hmm. I hope you know now. Because, yes, a, a surefire way to get the hurt to stop is to kill them. But maybe back then, at least, you didn't consider any other option. You made a mistake. Sounds like you didn't know what you were doing. No, I killed people. I <laughs> knew. I just thought I had to. They were hurting, helpless, haunted. It was all I could do. It was wrong. I was wrong. If I start again, you or Cassandra or Cullen need to kill me. Will do, Cole. Will do. I'll keep an eye on you. I didn't know you needed an eye kept on, but I will. Thank you. Hmm. What can you tell me about Reese? He was a mage. He saw me when most couldn't, and he remembered. He helped me, and I watched over him. I worried Evangeline would hurt him. She was a Templar, mm. but she didn't like hurting people. When I left, she stayed. 
Now she watches over him. They should have been with the rebels. Maybe they ran away together instead. Neither of them like killing. Right. If you like, I could use the resources of the Inquisition to locate your friend. No. If they are alive and safe, they should stay away. Mm -hmm. The last time he saw me, he didn't want to look at me. He saw a monster. Let him forget. Troubled soul, Cole. What can you tell me about Adamant Fortress? It is old, full of sadness and pain. It should be torn down. The veil is thin. We found a demon there. It had touched a man and made him real again. It scared Reese and Evangeline. The man wasn't supposed to be real. Then the demon found us. It put me back in the cupboard on the bad day. <laughs> Reese and Evangeline saved me. This is all a bit obscure for me, honestly. I imagine this is all very meaningful if you've read the books, but it's kind of like, yep, yep, cupboard, nonsense, magic. It's all magic. You said Seeker Lambert told you what you were. I'm hiding Reese from him, but he chants words and sees. I won't let you hurt Reese. My nose explodes, a shower of blood. Just another parasite that's wormed its way into our world, feeding off all the things you can't have. What we found at Adamant made him angry. We were the first rock rolling at the top of a mountain. He had to stop us. He killed so many. He didn't care. Cold. Corrupt. So I came and killed him. Hmm. If you hated Seeker Lambert, why go to the Seeker Fortress? Because he was right. I was a demon. I saw demons at Adamant. They put people in the dark, in the old hurts. I didn't want to be that. I heard the old songs of the Templars at Val Royo and followed them. If I forgot, fought, fell to felling, Templars would kill the demon. I wouldn't hurt anyone again. Interesting. Val Royo. I don't suppose you were there when I was there when the Templars showed up and followed them back. So imagine like going back to an old cutscene and seeing you in the background. It's not something I'd put past the game. I'll talk to you later. Yes. Not sure how much of that was interesting. Uh, was was uh, valuable, uh, Cole, but it was all very interesting. Um, looks like he doesn't want me to locate them though. I'll bear that in mind. Anyway, that's it for this episode, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, in the next episode, we'll talk to a few more people, and then we might actually make have to make a decision on where to go next. Ciao for now.